<coughs> so uh, good morning students uh, this particular lecture is for your examination uh, considering the uh, course syllabus we are having so this subject is nothing but uh, uh, switchgear and protection what is the meaning of switchgear and protection we know that uh, we are talking about a power system and the power system is nothing but consists of generating station load center and uh, we'll be having transmission line and uh, we'll be having seven and substation so if you observe this transmission line and substation they are quite open to the <clears throat> they are op open to the environment conditions so when you observe this uh, transmission line what happens during uh, in the uh, insulators which is nothing but not touching the equipment like uh, you you tell that you are you are, you are having a transformer and this transformer is not touching to the conductor. So, and you are talking about the transmission line. So, this transmission line is also not cutting to the, in mean, touching to the conductor. So, the insulators we have, we have designed, it's overhang from the tower and it will carry the conductor. However, due to the bad weather or deposition of uh, some air uh, uh, dust particle, what happens, the insulation property is degraded and sometimes it will maloperate. <coughs> So when this uh, uh, when this uh, insulator will be rupturing, then what will happen? The fault will be created, and you may see the fault will current will be flowing towards the ground. Okay, the fault current will be flowing towards the ground. So in this case, the whole other part it will be uh, disconnected, and the current will suddenly increase. So this will cause the basically uh, burning of a several equipment like here you see the transformer is burning. Now, uh, how, how can prevent this burning? So we can prevent this burning if you sense the fault condition whenever there is a burning of insulation or any other type of fault has occurred. So uh, that has to be uh, detected and that faulty section has to be disconnected from the system. So how did you do that? So basically that can be done by three component. One is the uh, sensors we may tell about and second one is nothing but the uh, relay. Relay is nothing but a, a device which will detect the abnormal operating condition and it will disconnect. Uh, it will give a signal to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker will trip the circuit. Okay. So now if you're talking about what is the total clearing time, how much time we are having to clear the fault, the time is very less means for a high voltage transmission line, you may tell that uh, why, why this circuit breaker and the relay operations is not there in our home. Because in your home, we'll be using MCB and uh, other type of fuges to disconnect the faulty section. So why it is uh, not useful for the high voltage transmission line like 33 KB or 162 KB or 200 KB or 400 KB transmission line? So because if you're talking about the fault, the fault current is really high there, means in terms of 9000 ampere, uh, uh, 9 kilo ampere, 100 kilo ampere like that. And uh, related to the heat generation that I square into RT, that is quite high. So if you want to, uh, if you want that uh, your uh, uh, conductor should not burn, then during that point, what you should have the I square R into T, the T we are having, it has to limit it. So if you are to limit the T within millisecond, like two millisecond, uh, sorry, uh, two cycle, that is 40 millisecond to uh, 0 0.1 second, that is five cycle, then it is possible to break the circuit during the faulty condition and the fault section may be disconnected. So so to uh, do that the operation time we are having it is very less for high voltage transmission line that is uh, nearly equal to <coughs> then that nearly equal to uh, five cycle so um, apart from that the, the two cycle we are having that is for the relay operating time and the circuit breaker operating time is nothing but called as uh, three cycle nothing but it is for um, three uh, three cycle however uh, the fault does not occur every time it will be there but it will come sometime so the uh, to uh, operate this uh, different type of relay and a circuit breaker the technique we have to develop is uh, allocated a very few cost about that and suppose you are quoting getting a 
total system of 100 rupees, then you are having only 5 rupees to develop this protection system. So the challenge for the protection engineer is uh, uh, we have to disconnect the faulty section within very less time and the amount of money they are giving to us is very less. That is called only 5% of the total cost. So if you observe from this uh, part, uh, from this figure, uh, what we are having, we are having a, a CT and a PT. So that CTPT gives a signal to the relay. So what is a relay? Relay is nothing but a device which will sense the abnormal condition. What is the abnormal condition? Whenever the fault will occur, like a line to ground fault, double line to ground fault, triple L fault, during that fault, fault will be, uh, current will be really high. These are all sound type of fault we are talking about. However, the other side we are having, that may be possible that will be having open conductor fault. So during the sound fault, the current will increase and during the open conductor fault, the voltage will increase. So normally we are having an operating limit for our transmission system. So this transmission system operating limit is nothing but designed. Suppose voltage, we are having 10% variation of voltage that is ob uh, observable. For the current, 20% current may be higher. Suppose 100 ampere is the load current, 120 ampere up to that we can extend be generated. However, during the fault, the fault current will be seven times higher, 700 ampere or something like that. So that will burn the circuit. So we need to dictate the fault and we need to clear the, like here, you, this is a bus and uh, you are talking about this is a line or load is connected. So this circuit breaker, we have to open whenever the fault will occur here. So when you are talking about this fault, so this relay will close the circuit. This is the normally uh, circuit we are having for the relay. So relay is normally open the fault will be detected and <clears throat> the fault will be detected and it will be cleared. So when you are talking about the fault is detected, uh, uh, it has to detect the abnormal condition only, not the transient because most of the time we are having in our system that is a transient. So what is transient? Uh, maybe in a sudden switching or uh, in induction motor starting and uh, for few seconds, if you observe the current and voltage deviated from the limit, that is something but called a transient. So, so whenever there is a uh, abnormal operating condition, if the current uh, increases and stays for a long division, so that may be detected and it, the circuit will close. The circuit relay circuit will be closed. When this relay circuit will be closed, what will happen? You see a battery and this is a closed path. So this trip coil will be energized. So this trip coil will open the circuit breaker. So this circuit breaker has to be opened, but how to open it? Because whenever the contact will be there and we are trying to open the switches. So we are definitely observing that there is a, we are observing that there is a sparking. So to avoid this sparking, what do we do? We are operating this, uh, 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 we, are, uh, we are using the circuit breaker in a closed chamber. Means this uh, things will be opened, but what will happen, this op opening will be done in the, uh, opening in uh, opening will be done in the, uh, this opening will be done in the, uh, basically it is uh, uh, closed chamber, right? So, so that we need to understand that how the opening should be done in a closed chamber. Okay. So let us uh, take this one to the paint. There I will be uh, telling that how we can do the. Uh, so like here you observe that uh, the different type of uh, devices we are having. So uh, here we are having the CTPT. The CTPT gives the signal to the circuit breaker. And the circuit breaker is nothing but uh, uh, a signal to the relay. This relay contacts are normally open. So if you're talking about a, a relay, the relay contact are normally open. And when the fault will be detected, it will go to NC. That is uh, normally closed. And when the circuit is closed, the current will be flowing like this. And the uh, trip coil we are having here, this will be energized. So when this is energized, so basically if you are observing the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker is nothing but having a contact and uh, this will be nothing but connected to a trip coil. So it is normally closed. So circuit breaker contact is normally closed. When it will be, fault will be detected, it will be taking back and it will be going uh, to normally open. So when you open this one, like we are opening any switch and current is flowing here. So what happens? The sparking will come across this contacts. And this may burn the total contacts we are having. So 
when we are opening this switch we need to ab avoid the sparking or we need to extinguish the sparking so how we are going to do that so if you are observing a circuit breaker what you are having we are having two contacts here so one contact will be fixed contact and the second contact will be nothing but what movable contact so it happens within a chamber so whenever we are trying to take the movable contact back so sparking will come but the sparking has to be extinguished by uh, reducing the number of charges here so how we are doing that so suppose we are having air and we will make the force uh, make the air flow through this one very uh, high speed so it will happen all the uh, charges we are having here it will be evacuated <coughs> so the sparking will be died down now in the second case what you are having like uh, we are using some uh, uh, oil uh, in, uh, oil medium so the oil will absorb the uh, charges or the oil it will be making flow from this side so what will happen this uh, one will be evacuated so this is nothing but uh, done uh, by uh, using different different cases like for that region when you are using air then we are calling it air blast circuit breaker when you are using oil as a medium to evacuate the uh, 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 charges then it is called a oil circuit breaker then when you are using vacuum then we are calling it as a vacuum circuit breaker when you are using this sf6 then this sf6 circuit breaker it is called it is called as sf6 circuit breaker so we'll be having different type of circuit breakers so this circuit breaker is nothing but designed as per the different uh, voltage level so mostly we are using sf6 circuit breaker for high voltages because sf6 is a uh, gas which can absorb the charges it is having uh, the negative coefficient of uh, electricity so it will absorb the all the charges we are having in our circuit breaker so for this uh, uh, so when you are observing this uh, circuit breaker uh, so circuit breaker is operating within three cycle uh, means total time period if you are talking about this fault clearing time whenever the fault will come how much time we are having to clear the fault so basically relay detects the fault within two cycle and circuit breaker operates within three cycle so here in this examination we'll be having these two component we'll be talking about the circuit breaker we'll be talking about this relay so we'll be having one portion as the relay basically that is over current relay so what is over current relay when the fault occurs basically we observe the voltage goes down the current increases so when we're talking about over current the normal fault behavior is that current will be really high so we will sense the current by ct and the setting we have given if the relay setting is more than that then it will give a trip signal to the circuit breaker the circuit breaker will trip right so this is nothing but the over current relay and the circuit breaker will be having different type of circuit breaker we have to go through the uh, types of circuit breaker we are having and we need to understand that what type of circuit breaker we are going to use right so these are the cttt and this is the minimum oil circuit breaker we are having and this is the relay we may uh, uh, see this electromechanical relay and this is the digital relay we'll be talking about this overcurrent relay in the uh, further classes now here these are the important points of the relay so what is uh, this reliability we need to understand uh, the reliability of a uh, uh, system so if you're talking about a relay so this relay is nothing but uh, designed to uh, operate whenever there is a abnormal condition right so uh, similarly uh, uh, we are having dogs in our home so the dog should uh, uh, bark at the thief if thief comes however sometimes we see the bark also uh, the dog also barks at the family members or the by our friends come to our uh, uh, home. So for that region, if you observe this uh, uh, relay characteristic, which is nothing but uh, a watchdog in our system. So whenever there is a fault, means we are having a system. So this is nothing but a source. And we are talking about uh, two things. One is called uh, CT is giving signal to the relay. And a relay is giving signal to the circuit breaker. And circuit breaker operates. So the circuit breaker uh, should be uh, there to the line side. And the uh, relay and other things should be there to the source side. So whenever fault occurs, we need to clear the fault. So how you clear the fault? Now, so we uh, do the uh, setting for this relay. Let us talk about the overcurrent relay. We are having a load of 5 ampere. So we have to set the relay 
considering this 5 ampere is the load current okay now the what is the fault current then we need to understand the fault current uh, must be uh, five, 5 to 7 times more than the normal operating condition so that is called uh, 35 ampere here so now when you were talking about the setting up this uh, uh, relay so normally we set like this like if high ampere is the load current 120 percent of the load current is nothing but 6 ampere so we'll be doing it 120 uh, 1.2 into 5 that is called 6 ampere but you may ask sir if the fault current is 35 ampere then why we are going to set this relay setting is a 6 ampere because sometimes what happens whenever the load increases even up to small value that is called 6 ampere current it will be there the relay will trip like similarly if you observe we are using our uh, uh, in our home we are using different type of uh, iron bars or iron rods if it is uh, we are having 5 ampere plug it will be having 10 ampere plug that is called uh, 1.2 kilowatt uh, or a 200 2000 kilowatt uh, ampere load uh, uh, power uh, what what is load so if you are putting uh, this plug 10 ampere plug in a 5 ampere plug what will happen it will trip the mcb will trip so the load increases quite uh, uh, obvious in our system it continuously increases when it increases above certain value then it will trip so our reliability will hamper we cannot supply the electrical uh, we cannot uh, supply the electrical energy to the load so for that reason we always set the setting uh, we we set the relay nearest to the load current however so, so suppose we are setting the relay uh, over current relay towards 20 ampere so 20 ampere still far less than this 30 ampere, 30 ampere but what happens suppose let us call a fault has occurred and the current is increasing up to 10 ampere so if the 10 ampere current flows for certain duration what will happen the circuit will be burning so do we have to prevent and once the circuit is burning then what is the condition we are having how we are going to restore the system suppose in your home the circuit is burning so what do you will do you have to repair all the things you have to repair the wires you have to repair the mcb you have to repair everything and it is not like that you will be doing you will be calling some person and uh, you have to uh, go for the different uh, 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 purchase of different equipments then only you will be uh, restoring the power after uh, uh, after going for a uh, repairing but uh, does it happen immediately we need time right we need uh, uh, at least uh, uh, four or five days or maybe at max we'll be getting one or two day and during that period no uh, light is there in our home so our reliability will hamper will be very uh, feeling very uh, suffocated without electrical energy Similarly, you are talking about a system like uh, Lavat or any other system. It is not having power for one or two days because something has burning. So we cannot uh, withstand without electrical energy. So for that reason, whenever there is a fault, we should prevent that the relay uh, should, uh, should not fail. If the relay fails, then what will happen? Definitely something will burn, like uh, the diagram we have seen. So once we are observing this uh, diagram, like uh, you see observe, uh, observe here that uh, the uh, relay uh, is failing and this uh, transformer is burning so once the transformer is burning then what we are having we are not having any other option we have to get another transformer and we have to purchase it and when you're talking about purchasing of the large transformer it does not one or two day it is six months business so can you wait for the six months without having electricity even we cannot think nowadays in home uh, in our villages so for that reason, what you need to do, we need to detect any type of fault, whatever the fault occurs, we need to do. So for the reason we are doing, we are always setting the relay towards the load point. load point Because you are observing the two conditions. One is the fault current, second is the load current. So even if we are putting towards the load current, even if small changes in the load current, it will be there, it will be detected as a fault. But what happens? We, our uh, uh, relay will be detected in the fault and the reliability will be lost but a fault will not be uh, fault will not uh, fault will not be detected that will never happen so considering this discussion will be having the property of the relay one is called dependability and second one is called security right so what is security security means whenever you are having a relay and it is operating for a load current 
suppose we have given a setting up to 5 ampere and uh, we are using certain load uh, we have purchased a new load and uh, when you are putting uh, this one in the socket the current increases up to uh, 5 ampere and the load trips so for the, and the switch trips so for that reason we are losing the reliability so this is nothing but the loss of the security means if the uh, relay operates for a normal operating condition or load condition and or any transient then we are telling that our security is lost so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, similarly what is dependability dependability means you are talking about a relay relay is not able to detect the fault matlab relay ka kaam kya hai relay should detect a fault but if the relay fails to detect a fault then it is nothing but called loss of dependability so these two conditions we have to uh, understand very uh, properly that what is a uh, relay characteristic the relay characteristic should be done in such a way that it will be very dependable means it will detect all the type of fault why because once the fault is not detected then our uh, uh, restoring business it will be very uh, time taking and for that reason what you do we always set the relay nearest the load point matlab jahan pe hamara load current hai uske aas pass hum log uski setting rakhte hain so for that uh, this also loses the reliability reliability means what we observe sometimes we will be having the fault and uh, load change and it will be operating so we lose the security so we are talking about our system that is called power system or in distribution system so our system is more dependable means whenever the fault will be there definitely it will be detected and for that reason since the setting is done more dependable it is losing the security uh, it, it 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 is losing the security right so this is nothing but the two cases we have to understand and you have to understand that uh, we cannot uh, uh we are not detecting the fault in our system that is that is a very bad situation because once we are not we, we, our real relay is failing to detect the fault then something is burning and once the things are burning or damage happens then either man will lose their life or the repairing cost will be really high the repairing time will be really high so for that reason we cannot even think about we have not detected a fault so definitely what you can do we can see that uh, the relay is there and the relay has to detect the fault so if a relay has to detect the fault then what should be our setting for this relay basically the setting of this relay we are having that is near the load current so basically if you are talking about a small system the system will be having a voltage and current rated current and rated voltage so let us talk about one per unit is the voltage and one per unit is the current so if the current increases above 120% or 1.2 per unit then it will be considered as a fault and if the voltage decreases be, below 10 10% like 0.9 to 1.1 per unit then it will be detected as a abnormal condition or uh, it will be detected as a uh, fault condition so we always set the relay considering the normal operating condition what is the normal operating condition we always try to maintain the operating condition as uh, one per unit <coughs> okay so now considering this uh, let us talk uh, talk about the overcurrent relay what is overcurrent relay basically overcurrent relay is nothing but uh, one relay uh, which detects the fault uh, considering the uh, considering the changes in our current right so similarly you observe here here it is a system so this system is nothing but uh, this uh, line is this conductor is nothing but called a bus what is a bus bus is nothing but a conductor from where we can take many connection to the loads and the if i talking about a generator connected to the bus if the generator capacity is 10 megawatt uh, 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 10 kilowatt and we are having load up to 5 kilowatt then even if you go for maximum loading load will increase up to 6 kilowatt still the current and voltage rating of this uh, voltage and frequency of this bus it will not change so conductor may be defined as a bus if the voltage current does not change if the load changes uh, load changes uh, up to the maximum value now whenever the fault will occur what will happen the circuit breaker will be tripping the ct and pt gives a signal to the relay relay has to detect the fault and 
circuit breaker has to be opened. I already told that how we have to open the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker contact has to be opened in a closed chamber so that the sparking or arcing should not be there. Okay. So now if we're talking about overcurrent relay, it requires only CT. So CT will give a signal to the relay. So inside the relay will be having setting. So like I told that we'll be having the load current is nothing but equal to 5 ampere. So if the current increases above 5 ampere, let us do 6 ampere. So the current uh, 6 ampere, it will be nothing but when sees, uh, the relay sees a current of 6 ampere, then what happens? This uh, circuit breaker trips. We already have studied that a CTPT. So basically in the trans power system, the CT, the secondary current will be either 1 ampere or 5 ampere. Similarly, the PT, the potential transformer we're having, the voltage is nothing but equal to 110 volt. So whatever the voltage level we are having, the 33 kb or 66 kb or we'll be having uh, 400 kb, always the CT, CT secondary side, of PT secondary side voltage is nothing but equal to 110 volt. However, the CT current we are having, either uh, primary current will be 1000 ampere or 2000 ampere, secondary side the CT current it will be 1 ampere, 1 ampere or 5 ampere, it is like that. So the relay we are talking about, this relay is nothing but is a device which is nothing but uh, sends a very less current. And uh, whatever the uh, 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 relay connected to the CTPT, they are nothing but the impedance uh, bear by the CT. So this relay is nothing but a burden for the CT. So how to set this uh, relay? Uh, we'll be having multiple uh, relays uh, we are having. Though initially we are talking about a uh, electromechanical relay, which is nothing but this. Further, we have uh, uh, improved our relay up to different type of uh, uh, op-amp based relay or microcontroller based relay. However, today uh, we are having that is nothing but called uh, numerical relay. So what is a numerical relay and how they are different from the previous relays? So basically, if you observe the uh, in, in, in numerical relay, they are having uh, some uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, data input. So data input is nothing but given by the CTPT. However, now they do not take the uh, data as a uh, analog signal. So the CTPT uh, analog signal is recorded and uh, you observe here the analog signal is converted into a digital signal by using this analog to digital converter. So this analog to digital converter gives the signal to the microprocessor which is nothing but the uh, relay unit. Now this relay unit is having memory and uh, it will be uh, having some ALU or having some registers to store the different information. So this microcontroller or microprocessor we are having here. So he, this is nothing but the where we will set the uh, with the coding to uh, uh, give a logic uh, to of this relay. So now we'll see what are the different protection techniques we are using. So normal case we are having either we are talking about a increase of current or we are talking about decrease of voltage. So basically most of the uh, systems we are having will be having overcurrent relay in our distribution system. Now distribution system means it can be defined as either 11 kb or 33 kb where we'll be having distributed energy uh, energy is distributed to different uh, uh, distribution systems however above that we'll be having 66 kb voltage and above that we'll be having 110 kb or 132 kb so up to 66 kb we're having the distribution system and uh, 110 kb and 120 132 kb they are the medium distribution system and above that like 220 kb 220 kb or 400 kb system so basically they are nothing but the transversal line system so if you are talking about the overcurrent relay up to 66 kb we are using this oc principle overcurrent relay means only one input will be there to the relay that is from the ct and the CT will be connected to the circuit breaker, it will give the signal. So we, we may talk about what type of uh, uh, circuit breaker we are using in the distribution system. Basically, low cost circuit breaker, either oil circuit breaker or vacuum circuit breaker are used for the distribution system up to 66 kb. However, apart from that, for the long transmission line, we are using this distance relay. So this distance relay is nothing but what you are giving both 
input to the relay that is voltage and current like v by i we are measuring so v by i is nothing but the impedance of the transmission line so it also helps us to dictate the impedance up to the fault point so when you observe the voltage by current you see the impedance so if the impedance up to the fault point is directly proportional to the kilometer of the line so we may tell if the fault is at 100 kilometer then we go and repair there however it helps us in uh, in restoring the system fault <coughs> means if you know the you are having a 200 kilometer line and if you know the fault location then you will directly go to that point and it will be uh, repairing the uh, things and other relays we are having that is called differential protection basically this is a unit protection and you are talking about a system so we are having inductor then we are having transformer so we are taking both end data uh, from the equipment and we will be comparing during the normal operating condition so during the normal operating condition, whenever uh, the fault uh, occurs uh, external, then uh, a normal operating condition or for external fault, this fault current, it will be uh, same for both these, both these uh, CTs. However, if you observe the normal uh, abnormal condition is internal fault, then it will be uh, detected as a fault. And uh, other protection schemes we are using like PLCC, power line carrier communication, DUTT, POTT, and zone 3 blocking YDDI measurement protection schemes. Okay. So today we are talking about this overcurrent relay. How this overcurrent relay, it will be uh, considered. So before learning this subject, you should have uh, two uh, subjects in your mind. One is called power flow analysis and the second called uh, is called fault analysis. So why the power flow analysis is done? So power flow analysis is done to uh, understand the operate condition, operating condition. What is the normal loading current? What is the normal uh, voltage at a different point? And we should uh, connect the load in such a way that the voltage limit should not be uh, violated. Okay. Once the load current is known, then we have to do the fault analysis to know what is the maximum fault current. Now, normal case, if you observe, now we are talking about 440 volt uh, system. So uh, in 440 volt uh, system, if you are talking about the total uh, line, line current, so line current will be either 40 ampere or 100 ampere is like that. And when the fault occurs, the current will be very high, like 700 ampere, something like that. So now this 100 ampere current is nothing but the load current then we should use a ct or we should use a breaker that is called mcb or something like that so we are going to purchase the breaker then we will tell you give me a uh, breaker which is nothing but uh, having capacity of uh, capacity of what capacity of uh, 100 ampere so it means that whenever the current increases above 100 ampere what will happen it will trip okay so it will trip the circuit now in case of our uh, uh, overcurrent relay so this load current is nothing but our reference the load current is nothing but the reference seeing the load current we have to set the uh, relay so the pickup value is the value of current at above which the relay operates means it is the preset current above which the relay operates and uh, uh, that is nothing but called the pickup value so mostly overcurrent relay is used for the uh, in the distribution system and overcurrent relay may include one or more overcurrent relay mostly they are used called uh, timely uh, overcurrent uh, relay using a time and current relay, uh, current relationship so now you are talking about a system this is called a radial system radial system means what we are having at one end we are having the source and the relays we are having R1 and R2. So whenever a fault occurs here, like F1, so the relay should operate that is called R2. However, if the relay fails to operate, why the relay will fail to operate? There may be relay has detected the fault, but circuit breaker has not opened. Or in the relay, we are having a battery. The battery has been discharged. So the uh, battery, uh, battery could not give a signal to the uh, relay so in those cases what will happen there is a chance that the relay will fail or the relay circuit breaker or the input to the relay has not come from the ct so in those conditions we should have a backup because once the fault is not clear then definitely it will be a hazardous condition for us so 
for this backup is nothing but provided by this r1 so how do you provide backup so normal case if you are observing that uh, uh, this relay it is operating at 0.1 second we provide a time delay for this relay r1 means basically you are talking about a 20 millisecond uh, uh, um, uh, time period for a 50 hertz system so for 50 hertz system this fast relay should operate at a 5 milli uh, cycle so 5 cycle means 0.1 second right then uh, at least we should give a backup up to twice of this one so twice of this one means how much that is equal to 0.2 second so we give certain uh, uh, um, backup so basically 0.1 second plus 0.2 second is nothing but 0.3 second should be the time of operation for this one so, so in this case what we are doing initially we are uh, seeing that either the fault is there by taking the current as input so the current whenever it increases definitely this relay should operate with a minimum time and if this relay has not operated fault has not cleared then with a time delay this should operate <coughs> now uh, in the uh, other side we are having this is a uh, system where we are having sources are both the sides now it is also a radial system but we will be having sources from both the sides means whenever fault occurs here so we can disconnect this faulty section from this source and the bus which is nothing but connected to load l2 we can supply from this side if the fault is occurring at l f1 then we can supply the current from other side Uh, uh bus uh, bus b from the other side so for that reason what we are having we are we have improved the reliability okay so now how to know because earlier we are uh, seeing only the current so if the fault occurs at f2 or fault occurs at f2 f1 both the uh, both the cases the relay r2 will see the fault <coughs> current has increased so it has no information that either the fault current is increasing for this fault or the fault is increasing uh, uh, fault is increasing for f1 fault so for that uh, case we need to improve the reliability we should include the directional property directional property means we can understand from the relay that fault is occurring at the f1 point or f2 point so basically if you are observing the normal operating condition <coughs> hello 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 ha sir namaste sir ha to cabin mein hai sir nahi nahi main abhi aaya nahi hu aaja wo kal dekha tha sir kya kare fir uska main aata hu tumse baat karta hu acha acha theek hai hmm So for observing the uh, this uh, total uh, directional overcurrent relay, why do you require? So if you are uh, getting the direction of uh, uh, fault, either the oper operating uh, uh, either at bus B I am present, the relay R2 is understanding that the fault is at the F1 point, then this relay the circuit breaker will operate. So when the circuit breaker will operate, we can supply the electrical energy to this bus B from this side. now if this relay r2 understand that uh, fault is there in this section right uh, fault is there in this section so f2 then what will happen it will operate this circuit breaker will operate so if this circuit breaker operates then we can supply the uh, bus b from this side right so to improve the reliability we should include the uh, directional property means either the fault is in this direction or the fault is in this direction so this can be done by considering the voltage as a reference now if you understand the uh, this characteristic if you take the voltage as a reference for this type of f1 fault current will be in this direction it will increase but it will increase in this direction for other type of fault like at f2 this is called if1 and for if2 what will happen current will be exactly 180 degree phase shift current will increase but it will increase in this direction right so if you are observing the current angle voltage and current if it is more than 90 because uh, as per our understanding whenever we are having a circuit it will be having resistance as well as inductance 
so the resistance and inductance current cannot be be above 90 degree right however if you are observing here the current is above 90 degree so if it is uh, positive and uh, within 90 degree then fault is at f1 and if it is more than 90 degree <coughs> and negative then what will happen it will be uh, the reverse direction that is fault at f2 so this directional property improves the relay current uh, uh, relay characteristic whenever now you may understand that why we have gone for this type of uh, characteristic basically it is required that we should go for improving the reliability okay so now <coughs> if i talking about this uh, backup and other thing this backup can be provided by three ways like this is uh, current graded current grader means you just uh, give this current like this is operating at 5 ampere this is operating at uh, 7 ampere then uh, this relay will not operate at the same time for 5 ampere right so this is called current grader uh, operation the time grader operation what you do uh, <coughs> whenever there is a increase in current this relay will operate but this op relay will operate with a uh, minimum time delay minimum time delay means suppose i am setting it to 0.5 second so it will wait for 0.5 second and it will operate similarly this backup relay should be operating but it should operate if this relay is not operating then the backup relay should operate within 0.9 second right so we are having some uh, uh, pick up value of this current so operating time is constant irrespective of magnitude and the current uh, the pick up value uh, operating time is independent of the current relay closest to the fault has the shortest operating time so now this is the characteristic of a relay so if you observe that uh, the pick up current we are having this is the time of operation so we, this is the pick up current so whenever the current uh, increases above this value then what will happen it will operate within a minimum time so this is called definite minimum time relay okay definite minimum time relay so <coughs> so when you are having uh, this type of relay the problem is that suppose you are having uh, uh, one source is here and we are talking about a relay here and uh, source uh, towards the load point this current will be having minimum time of operation let us tell 0.1 second then this relay this is called suppose r1 this is sub called suppose r2 and this is suppose r3 so r1 is operating 0.1 second r2 is operating in 0.3 second then r uh, r3 is operating in 0.5 second what happens here whenever the fault occurs in this side the fault current would be uh, let us tell if3 is nothing but equal to source voltage vs divided by the impedance of the transmission line if you observe it is traveling very less distance so the transmission line impedance will be lower if the transmission line impedance will be lower then what will happen the fault current will be really high so if the fault current is high then what you can say the, uh, the relay operating time uh, the i square into r, r losses will be really high. i square r into t the heat generation will be really high but what you see we have deliberately given some time delay up to 5 0.5 second hum logo ne jaan bujh ke is relay ko delay kiya hai because we need to provide the coordination so for that for this cases what you observe our relay will be nothing but uh, delayed and this delay operation may cause the overheating of the other components like generator transformer during the fault so this uh, this should not be suggested right so in which case this dmt type of relay is used so the case where we are having maximum source impedance like the source impedance is really high so in those cases what we say like Uh, we are having a system the system is nothing but suppose 11 kb and uh, the voltage uh, the transmission line impedance is nothing but uh, 5 ohm however the impedance at this point uh, for the uh, uh, tra transformer and other, thing, other things is nothing but 100 ohm so in those cases the fault occurs here or the fault occurs here it doesn't have any change so in those cases we may use this type of dmt type of relay where the source impedance is really high however whenever the source impedance is less 
towards going the source of the time of operation will be uh, more so it will burn the circuit so for that reason we should talk about the <coughs> <coughs> reduction in time uh, reduction in time to when you are going towards the source now the other type of relay we are talking about that is called instantaneous overcurrent relay so where we require this instantaneous overcurrent relay so when you are having a fault and immediately if you want to trip the circuit there you require this instantaneous over overcurrent relay now so as i show you that uh, uh, what happened uh, initially we are talking about a system and to provide the backup we uh, when you go towards the source side the relay time period has uh, uh, relay operating time has increased so this relay operating time if it is increasing then it will be a problem for us so for that reason whenever whenever we are going towards the source side the current will increase so this increase in current should result in decaying in uh, decrease in relay operating time so for that reason what we are doing so this is nothing but a top operating time of the relay this is nothing but the fault current so whenever the fault current increases the relay operating time should decrease so this is nothing but the uh, procedure we use uh, to coordinate the relay means if this is the first one relay this is suppose r1 this is suppose r2 and this is suppose r3 so for the fault occurs here so for fault occurs here for r1 so these are the three characters this is for r1 this is for r2 then this is for r3 we are having so if the fault current is here let us tell 100 ampere so this will operate with this time this will operate with this time this will operate with this time you see there is a gap between this operating time that is a top1 top2 and top3 so if this by any chance this relay fails then with some certain time gap this will operate with some certain time gap this will operate further if you come to this side like uh, towards the source side r3 if the fault current further increases okay so what you happen uh, what you see here <coughs> for fault current further increases so this characters will be nothing but like this i will show you the characteristics so you observe this also uh, operating at a minimum time okay so now we are having different type of characteristic uh, for this uh, uh, operation like standard inverse very inverse uh, very very inverse time over current relay extremely uh, over current relay okay so now uh, these are the nothing but the setting of this relay how you observe that uh, the minimum time is nothing but uh, given now this is nothing but the uh, uh, idmt characteristic electromechanical relay so already dix type uh, uh, system we have understood so dix type it's only operating whenever we are having the two coils so one coil will be nothing but this one and second coil will be nothing but this one so uh, when this uh, two coils produces fluxes so phi 1 and uh, phi 2 they will be producing the eddy current so phi 1 will produce the eddy current that is ie1 phi2 will produce the eddy current ie2 now phi1 and ie2 interacts and phi2 and ie1 interacts and they will be getting a torque so the torque will nothing but responsible for the rotation of the disk okay the torque is nothing but responsible for the rotation of the disk so this rotation of the disk we are having uh, is possible whenever uh, the two eddy currents are uh, enough now uh, so in this case uh, basically one coil that is called uh, uh, present over here that is called primary coil is uh, working as a restraining coil and the other coil is nothing but uh, use as the operating coil so what are these these are nothing but the plug settings we are having so if you increase uh, uh, the if you put plug at the different points what happens the number of turns over this one it will be changing like you observe this line so this line is nothing but here so if you are putting the plug here then number of turns uh, are decreasing so if the number of turns decreases then this is nothing but provided by the restraining torque so if the current is really high because <coughs> the flux produced by this one should oppose the flux produced by this one so if it is uh, current is really high then only this will operate so if you put your plug then the plug will be showing the if the current is 10 ampere then only the uh, uh, disc will start rotating however if you put this one here like uh, in this side 
then it will be showing if the current is one ampere then also it will be operating how why it happens because the total mmf we are having that is nothing but directly proportional to n into i that is uh, ampere turns so if the number of turns reduces then the mmf required to produce the disk rotation that is constant so if you are changing the uh, number of turns by putting the plus at different point so if the number of turns increases uh, number of turns increases the current has to decrease which is nothing but for this case if the number of turns decreases like if the number of turns is nothing but this one then you have to uh, increase the current so that uh, we have to produce this much mmf okay so similarly these are nothing but the different characteristic we are having so you are observing that extremely inverse that operates with a very less time and uh, you may observe here the after that very inverse then we are having definite time then we are having standard inverse <coughs> so the standard inverse characteristic we are having that is uh, nothing but uh, tms uh, tms into 0.14 divided by uh, this is ir so ir to the power 0.02 uh, minus 1 what is ir ir is nothing but i divided by is what is 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 nothing but the relay current setting that is called pickup current okay now what is this current i this i current is nothing but uh, the uh, transmission line current suppose il divided by ct ratio so what is this ct ratio already we know that uh, normal current uh, load current is suppose 100 ampere the secondary side relay current will be 1 ampere so ct ratio will be 100 by 1 that is equal to 100 so once you know the load current then you have to set the cts accordingly then so that the current in the secondary side will be 1 ampere or either uh, 2 ampere so these are the relay characteristic according to this standard that is iec 60255 so we are using this characteristic now what is this one we are calling this is uh, <coughs> i divided by is that is pickup setting how do you set the pickup current pickup current is always is always set considering the load current okay so we'll see how it is really setting and uh, apart from that there is other type of setting that is called time setting multiplier or time dial setting okay tms is nothing but called time multiplier setting and uh, td is nothing but called as time dial setting okay so now what happens now, when you are talking about this uh, uh, pickup current, the pickup current should be set considering the load current. If the load current is 100 ampere, then we may set this uh, uh, setting as 1.2. Okay, 1.2 times of uh, so 120 percent of this current. So 120 ampere is the thing about the pickup current now. So apart from that. <coughs> Apart from that, uh, when you observe the uh, normal operating characteristic, it is drawn in terms of uh, plug setting multiplier that is called PSM. And this is the, the fault current we are having here that is, sorry, TOP, that is the time of operation. So, what is the PSM? PSM is nothing but the fault current uh, that is the uh, fault current in the secondary side of the CT, uh, secondary side of the CT divided by the pickup setting. Okay. So, we'll see see how the current uh, will be uh, set considering the uh, different load current so now you see psm is nothing but the fault in the relay coil divided by the pickup current so to set this pickup current we should have the information about the load current like we are having a system here and the system is nothing but connected to different loads so these loads are nothing but connected to the uh, buses so what is a bus? This bus is nothing but a substation we are having like uh, here you are in your campus you observe we are having a uh, near cafe 96 we are having a uh, substation. So inside the substation we have connected multiple loads of the uh, multiple loads of different buildings like main building and uh, um, our old building now different hostels they are also taking the energy from this one. <coughs> and where we are having like uh, uh, this is a here we are having one transformer and we are taking the energy to the uh, um, admin admin building so in the admin building if you observe near admin building we are having a uh, transformer that is called css compact substation 
and uh, from there we are distributing the energy so we know that whenever we are having a decrease in voltage uh, by uh, taking the current from uh, where so basically current is growing suppose 100 amperes so 100 and uh, we are having impedance up to let us say 1 ohm so 100 volt is nothing but the drop so if you are taking that uh, voltage drop is 100 volt here we will not get supplying any voltage to the load so for that reason we have to use a transformer whenever we are going towards the load point <coughs> So when you observe this uh, setting here at this point, we need to dictate the fault and clear the fault. We should have a relay. So the relay is nothing but called overcurrent relay, OCR. So this OCR, we are talking about it may be a IDMT type or a DMT type. DMT type means definite minimum time. What is definite minimum time? Whenever the fault current increases, it will operate like this is the uh, I, uh, fault current and this is the pickup current or the operating time TOP. Whenever the fault current increases, it should operate within a minimum time. So this is called definite minimum time. Uh, the other type of relay we are having that is called IDMT, inverse definite minimum time. Okay, I inverse definite minimum time. So in this case, what will happen? Whenever the fault current increases, the time of operation it will decrease. It is like that. So if you observe this previous characteristic, these are nothing but the IDMT characteristic. So for different <coughs> for different uh, type of uh, this uh, IDMT character uh, for different type of characteristic will be having different operating points and uh, this uh, characteristic you may observe that the characteristic is drawn in a semi-lock paper and uh, this is a non-linear characteristic we are having for the system now what is the time setting we have to understand now you may see the relay here so these are nothing but the contact we to, uh, already i told you that uh, the relay contact will be normally open and when it will see a fault it will be going to close so you see this is a stud we are having here when the disc will rotate this stud will nothing but going towards this side and it will touch this contact so whenever it will give uh, touch this contact, then automatically it will give a signal to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker will open. And these are nothing but the points where we'll be inserting the plugs. Hum log pe plug insert karke, jo secondary ka number of turns hai, usko change karte hai, right? So now the position of this stud can be changed. Like here, this is the contact we are having and we are having some contact here. So this contact may turn this much distance and touching here, or we may put the same contact here so that it will only rotate up to this much distance. So now you see either you may put it here. So when it will be kept, kept it at, at this point, so what will happen? It will take more time to rotate and touch this one. So in this case, what you are having, it is taking more time. How it can be controlled? Here there is a nerve. Here there is a nerve. So you can move this uh, direction. You can move this uh, nub here. So whenever it is kept at one, then it is kept at maximum distance. So when even if it is seeing a fault, what will, what will happen? It will take a more time to touch this contact. If you are keep, keeping at a 0 0.1, so it is nothing but placed at here. So it is directly, whenever it will see a fault, it will take less time and it touch this contact. So now this is nothing but called your time dial setting, TDS. So this time dial setting is nothing but can be varied from 0 0.1 to 1. So when it is 1, basically we don't keep 1 or we don't keep 0 0.1. If it is uh, towards the load point, they may be kept as 0 0.1. However, the other relays should be having minimum time uh, of operation. In this case, uh, of DMT, whenever the fault current increases, uh, definite minimum time, it should wait up to this much time and it should operate, right? But in this case, when we are going for uh, backup, backup of this relay, we observe that we, if you are going towards this side, then what happens? The time of operation for this uh, uh, D relay is increasing. So if you are talking about time of operation is increasing, then uh, basically we are allowing a delay during a high fault current also. So this may cause uh, the damage of the whole system. Okay. 
so that is nothing but our problem so we are having two types of setting one is called uh, the peak up setting what is peak up setting the current uh, over which the current will operate now uh, over which the relay will operate that is nothing but called the uh, uh, peak up setting and second one second one is nothing but called as the time setting second one is nothing but called time setting so time setting is nothing but also called as time setting multiplier tsm and the uh, uh, peak up setting if it is varies then we have to see that called uh, 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 that is called peak up setting or plug setting okay peak up setting and plug setting there are two different uh, uh, points if you are talking about the peak up setting so basically uh, peak up setting is decided according to the load current how about the plugs we are having it is fixed okay we may have a different pickup setting but uh, you are having the plug setting here you are having here if you observe the different uh, plugs uh, which is available here if you change the plugs automatically this much current you have to operate now the same relay it may be used at a different point somewhere if the pickup current is uh, uh, let us tell 10 ampere then we have to use this plug where somewhere we will use the pickup uh, pickup current maybe uh, 2 ampere then we may use this plug are you, are you getting so this is nothing but the uh, plug setting which is uh, particularly given in the relay however the pickup current we are having that is depending upon where we are using this relay pickup current may be different uh, and it is depending upon the system condition however for the relay this plug setting is nothing but fixed and it is depending upon the relay construction are, are you getting so now uh, let us talk about the how to set the relay determine uh, considering this problem so the determine the time of operation uh, operation of a 5 ampere 3 second over current relay uh, having current setting of 125 percentage 125 percentage means we are telling that current setting the if the current is 100 ampere so if the uh, over current relay is up to 120 ampere then it will operate that a time setting or multiplier of 0.6 0.6 means what already i told you that tms that is called time multiplier setting or tsm time setting multiplier so normally it can be in between 0 to 1 or 0.1 to 1 so here it is 0.6 okay the supply a uh, connected to a supply circuit of 400 by 5 ampere current transformer means we are having a system and this system is nothing but connected to uh, uh, connected to the load and here we are having a ct so this ct is nothing but having the secondary rating of that is nothing but 400 by 5 so our load current is how much basically if you are observing the load current it will be it should be equal to 4 uh, 400 ampere so whenever the load current flows in the secondary side of the ct it should be 5 ampere but whenever we are designing the relay we should design the relay to operate for the abnormal condition so if it is increasing above 5 ampere it is normal load current so what is abnormal current abnormal current or the fault current is decided by this one so that is 125 percentage so considering the load current in the secondary side that is 5 ampere the peak up current will be decided as 1.25 that is called which is given in the uh, exam uh, uh, example so 5 into 1.25 that is 6.25 ampere are you getting so 6.25 ampere this is the peak up setting means above which if the current increases then the relay will give a trip signal to the circuit breaker so after that if you observe the fault current is 4000 ampere if you are observing here the fault current is nothing but equal to 4000 ampere so what is the for this fault current what is the current observable in the ct secondary because ct secondary is having ratio of what uh, 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 80 so so if you are talking about uh, <coughs> uh, if you are talking about this uh, current in the ct secondary side that is 4000 ampere is the fault current divided by the ct ratio so ct ratio is 400 by 5 so 405 is, is nothing but equal to 80 so if you are observing here so the total current will be observing in the secondary side will be 50 ampere so this 50 ampere is nothing but what is the fault current in the secondary side what is a plug setting multiplier plug setting multiplier means pickup setting already we have decided so this is the fault current 
so fault current in the city secondary side divided by the pickup setting is nothing but our psm that is is equal to 8 which is nothing but given here are you getting so given psm eight time of the operation up 3.5 second so now we are having <coughs> The time of operation uh, is 3.5 for PSM value is uh, 8. So it is given that if the PSM is at uh, 8, then time of operation should be equal to 3.5. It means what? We are having a time dial setting. So if you are putting this uh, uh, PSM at 8 and if it is kept at the far away position, means a point at 1, then it should take a time of how much? 3.5 seconds. Okay. Now, if you make this time setting multiplier as 0 0.8 okay or uh, if you are talking about a 0 0.6 then uh, with how much time it should operate 0 0.6 means what it is kept towards the close contact matlab jahan pe contact ko pahunchna chahiye usse thoda kam distance pe hai one matlab hum log duri duri pe hai aur 0 0.6 matlab pass mein hai agar one uh, uh, one pe hai to usko kitna 3.5 second lag raha hai so, if 0.6, है तो उसको कितना टाइम लगेगा ना 2.1 सेकंड लगेगा ठीक है दिस इज नथिंग बट द कैलकुलेशन फॉर हाउ मच व्हाट शुड बी द ऑपरेटिंग टाइम ऑफ द रिले तो सिमिलरली वी मे हैव ए सिटी रेशियो दैट इज 500 5 टीएमएस इज इक्वल टू 0.1 एंपियर एंड पीएसएम इज 100% सो नाउ डिटरमाइन द at uh, one, one, 130%, 200%, 300%. Now, <coughs> so consider that uh, fault current is nothing but uh, 100% that is equal to uh, 500 ampere. So, that, uh, we are having that is called uh, setting of the relay. So if it is 130%, then setting will be uh, 6.5 ampere. If it is 200%, then setting will be 10 ampere. If 300%, setting will be 15 ampere. Okay. So now, uh, accordingly, we will calculating. Uh, we can calculate the relay characteristic. We can calculate. Uh, we can see the relay uh, setting. Considering the load current, relay को जब भी आप लोगों को set करना है, उसमें दो setting होता है, एक है pickup setting. So what is pickup setting? The pickup setting should be always decided considering the load current. The what is the load current? Uh, load current is nothing but the uh, total load connected uh, <coughs> current towards the total uh, current for the total load connected. And considering that we normally give a setting for the overcurrent relay is nothing but 120% to 150%. This is the setting for the overcurrent relay. So, if we have current 100 ampere, then we have a pickup setting that is 120 ampere, 125 ampere. Hoga. Okay. Now, second one is the time setting multiplier. Time setting multiplier is nothing but uh, what we have shown. Here is a time dial. So, here is a uh, stud. So, this stud has to move whenever the fault will be there. So here is a contact. It has to touch this contact. When it will touch this contact, it will give a signal to the circuit breaker to operate. So the time of operation of the relay is nothing but this much. Uh, this is nothing but the time of operation of this relay. That it has to travel this much uh, distance. If you keep it at here, then it will be one. If you keep it at less point, that is minimum position, that is it will be zero point one. So this is nothing but the uh, points we have to know about the overcurrent relay. <clears throat> Apart from uh, that, there is a second slide we are having that is called uh, uh, overcurrent relay 2. So here, uh, how to uh, set the setting of a overcurrent relay that we need to identify. So particularly, this is a directional overcurrent relay characteristic. No need to go for this equation. So we just want to understand that we will be having two overcurrent relay. One is DTOC, definite time overcurrent relay. Uh, the uh, definition of DTOC is nothing but uh, definite time overcurrent relay. So how to set the relay? So here you observe some load current is there. So this load current is for this one. Let us tell 100 ampere is flowing. 
so 100 ampere current is flowing now according to this 100 ampere you have to give a city so city you may tell 100 is to 1 okay so initially if you are putting this relay then this should operate at a minimum time because we are if you are going back then we have to provide a backup by this relay so for initial condition whenever it is above 120 percent let us tell secondary current is equal to one ampere so we may go for 100 to 120 percent that is 1.2 ampere is the pickup setting and if it is operating at uh, 1.2 ampere then we may consider the minimum time operation for this one that is tsm is equal to 0 0.1 second okay now 0 0.1 second is the tms for uh, tsm for this first relay that is uh, rb and the second one is the pickup setting we have decided that is nothing but equal to 1.2 the ct ratio we may tell that is 100 is to 1 this is for the rb okay now we have to calculate the operating time of this uh, relay so what is the operating time of this relay uh, the operating time of this relay uh, relay should be equal to uh, you may observe here that is uh, relay operating time plus, uh, plus circuit breaker uh, circuit breaker has to after the relay will operate the circuit breaker has to open so when the relay will see there is a fault after that it will give a signal to the circuit breaker circuit breaker will open so basically the total operating time for this uh, relay TRA, TRA, TRA is nothing but equal to that is uh, operating time for this uh, relay plus circuit breaker operating time plus this uh, some overshoot we may also tell so tra it is nothing but uh, 0. Point, uh, circuit breaker operating time is nothing but considered as 0. 0.5 and overshoot time let us tell it is nothing but uh, 0. 0.2 and minimum time we have taken that is 0. 0.1 so this is nothing but the total operating time for this relay ra that is 0. 0.8 second so what we may say uh, that uh, the RB is uh, really set at the first point that is equal to 0 0.1 second. However, the backup relay, backup relay means the point A relay. So this should operate with some time delay. After how much time delay? First, this relay should operate. If this relay not operate, then we should operate with this relay. The total operating time we are having for this one, this is nothing but 0 0.8, right? So 0 0.8 तो इसको 0 0.8 सेकंड से पहले तो ऑपरेट करना ही नहीं चाहिए। अगर करना चाहिए तो 0 0.8 सेकंड के बाद ऑपरेट करना चाहिए। So the minimum operating time for this uh, relay should be equal to how much? That is uh, 0 0.8 सेकंड। So in case of a DTOC relay, directly whenever we are talking about the setting of this uh, relay, uh, let us tell the operating time will be nothing but equal to 0 0.1 सेकंड for this one. And if it is not operating at 0 0.1 second, after 0 0.7 second, it should operate. This backup relay should operate. So the time setting for this one should be how much? That is 0 0.8 second. Similarly, if you are having another uh, relay, which is nothing but giving backup to at array. Uh, so for that reason, what you have to do? We have to add the other times. So that is the relay operating time for this one is 0 0.8 plus the circuit breaker operating time is equal to 0 0.5 plus some overshoot. So this overshoot we are talking about because it is a mechanical system and sometime we'll be having some delay in a signal. By chance it get delayed. So we may consider that is 10% uh, overshoot. So 10% of this total time we are having. So here it is uh, 1.3. So 10% of the 1.3 you may consider. So in this previous case uh, we are having that is nothing but equal to 20%. So that is 0 0.2 second we have uh, taken. So similarly, we can set this uh, relay. So when you are considering the setting of this uh, relay, we should have, there are two settings. One is IL maximum and second one is IF minimum. How do you get IF minimum? From the fault analysis. How do you set, uh, how do you get this uh, IL maximum? From the load flow analysis. From load flow analysis, whatever the currents are there, this current, we have to already i told that in case of overcurrent relay we should set the relay towards the load point so jo bhi ye hum log ka load point hai usi ke aas pass hum log ko setting rakhta hai and we have to take the ct ratio according to according to this uh, load occurrence then we have to go for pickup setting and the, when you are going for the pickup setting 
we have to check our settings how what should be the time of operation according to this fault current that is called if minimum now here if you observe what is the time period for the uh, operating of relay a so the tra must be greater than trb plus t circuit breaker operating time plus overshoot time okay this you should remember hello uh -huh. yeah Uh, please submit it in the department. I will take it from the department. Uh, in the office, Rabiji is there. You talk to uh, him and you submit it there. I will uh, take it from him. Okay. So now, uh, if you are talking about the other type of relay, that is uh, IDMT relay, this is nothing but a definite time over current relay. Where to use this definite time over, over current relay? When this, uh, you have seen that this ZS. So this ZS is nothing but what the, let us tell, we are having some generator and from there we are having some transmission line and we are connecting to the distribution system. And in the distribution system only, we are going to use this over current relay. So the distribution system impedances like uh, the trans uh, distribution system line length, we are talking about 10 kilometer, 20 kilometer. The impedance of this line will be really less. However, whenever we are talking about the impedance of this transfer line, it will be really high. So when you are talking about this bus is getting some voltage and uh, the impedance of this whole system is really high, let us tell 100 ohm. Mm -hmm. However, the impedance of this total line is nothing but equal to 5 ohm and 5 ohm. In this case, the current does not change either it fault occurs here or the fault occurs here so this impedance is comparatively higher so for that reason whenever you are observing that fault current does not change from this point to this point we may go for this ttoc means by changing only the fault current however if the relay is directly connected to a source the source impedance is less so if you are going for towards this for load side then fault current will increase so in those cases we should not go for this uh, ttoc so mostly the transmission system we are having, they are nothing but uh, supplied with IDMT. However, the DTOC is supplied with, with uh, this uh, distribution system. Now, we will observe this IDMT characteristic. We know that IDMT characteristic means, means what? Whenever the fault current will increase, the characteristic, the time of operation will decrease. So it is inverse time characteristic. Normally, if you are observing the uh, that time of operation is decided by one factor that is 0 0.14. This is the standard inverse characteristic into TSM divided by PSM plug setting multiplier to the power 0 0.02 minus 1. So what is the PSM? The PSM is nothing but equal to that is fault current in the city secondary side, uh, city uh, secondary side and divided by uh, the pickup setting that is called uh, pickup current of the overcurrent relay. Now, what you required for this uh, uh, setting of this relay, uh, you require two things. One is the load current and second one is the minimum fault current. So this is the load current given, that is 80 ampere. So when you're talking about this 80 ampere uh, is the load current, you observe here, the current is flowing through this uh, IDMT relay CT. So the CT is nothing but uh, uh, giving the signal to the relay. The relay will give a signal to the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker will operate, okay? So now what we can do, if you observe the load current is uh, 100 ampere, uh, uh, 80 ampere. So normally we may set the relay up to 125%. Uh, so maximum load current may happen at this point. Let us tell it is 25% of the uh, overload. So 80 ampere into uh, uh, 1.25, that is nothing but 100 ampere. So for 100 ampere, we may set a, uh, we may have a CT that is called 100 is to 1. So why may, why we have taken like that? Because uh, the standard CTs will be available in our uh, the uh, distribution system or in our, those are produced by different companies are nothing but 100 is to 1, 200 is to 1, 300 is to 1, 200 is to 5. 
we may not get a city that is uh, 80 by 1 or 90 by 1. So now you observe the plug setting of this current is nothing but 1 ampere because we have to set up to 125% of this one. So city we select kar liya 100 is to 1. Now we have to pick up setting laga diya, that is equal to 1 ampere. Now what should be the operating time of this uh, relay? <coughs> we need to calculate. So by using that formula, that is equal to 0 0.14 into TSM divided by PSM to the power 0 0.02 minus 1. At the same time, if you observe here, that is uh, at the same time, if you observe here, what is the load current for the relay array? But uh, if you observe the previous uh, here, here the current is 160 ampere, right? Here the current is 80 ampere. The total load, load current which is flowing through array is 160 ampere plus 80 ampere. So this is the total load current for this one. So total load current will be 160 plus 80 plus 25 percent overloading we are taking that is 300 ampere. So now the CT ratio we can take that is 300 is to 1 and the peak it may consider as 1.1 uh, oh, ampere. Okay. Now you have to find out the operating time of TV. So use that formula 0 0.14 into TMS, uh, PSM to the power 0 0.02 minus 1. So this is nothing but the uh, current we are having. Now what current we should take? Now if you observe, if we are setting it here. So here is the maximum fault current we are having. So we need to set this one for the maximum fault current. So maximum fault current is nothing but given as 3000 ampere at a relay, uh, uh, relay A. So now we may put this maximum current to find out the peak of setting uh, PSM. So the PSM is nothing but equal to 0 point, uh, sorry, 30. So what is TRV? TRV is nothing but the operating time of RV is nothing but 0 0.14 into TSM is equal to 0 0.1. Since it is a first relay, we may take it uh, TSM at 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 into 0 0.14 divided by PSM to the power 0 0.02 minus 1. So this 0 0.2 is nothing but the operating time of RV for the fault uh, current is nothing but 3000 RPM. Now let us take circuit breaker operating time is this one. So 0 0.7 now consider 10% overshoot. So it will be 0 0.07. The total operating time for array is nothing but is equal to this one. So array ko agar operate karna hai, to basically iske baad hi operate karna padega. Iske pehle to wo operate kiya to uh, coordination nahi ho paega. Okay. So we are setting this relay. Relay RB should operate first. After that array should operate. But what is the minimum time of operation for this array? This is nothing but 0 0.77. So this is 0 0.77. Now we have to consider the same fault current, which is nothing but to coordinate the both of the relay. So fault current is already we have taken 3000. So 0 0.14 into TMS divided by PSM to the power 0 0.02 minus 1. So fault current is 3000 divided by 300. The pickup setting is nothing but uh, 300. Uh, 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 CT ratio is 300. So pickup setting is 1 ampere. So here it's 10. So if you put it here, then we'll be getting the values that is called to TMS is equal to 0 0.26. So 0 0.26 uh, may not be available. Maybe the digital relay may be available. So we may go up to, ya to hum log isko 0 0.3 le lenge, ya phir hum log 0 0.2 le lenge. Thik hai? Kyunke uske bich ka karna hamare liye possible nahi hoga. Now if you're talking about the setting of this overcurrent relay, RB ko hum logo ne CT ka ratio diya 100 is to 1. Pickup setting is 1 ampere. So plug setting. So pickup setting we have given 1 ampere. Basically, we will be having the plugs over the overcurrent relay. So <coughs> <coughs> so if you observe this overcurrent relay here. So this plug points will be you have to. So this plugs has to be inserted at one ampere. If you find out the plug uh, pickup setting at two ampere, then plug has to be entered at this point. So accordingly,
So, uh, <clears throat> So this is uh, one question we'll be having uh, in your uh, sem uh, mid semester examination. How to set the overcurrent relay? Uh, so again, I am telling that whenever we are talking about uh, the overcurrent relay, we'll be having this type of configuration, and the relay will be set according to the load current. So the load current, uh, according to the load current, we have to observe the um, one twenty five percent to. Uh, 20, 25 percent to 50, 150 percent. We have to consider the peak up setting of the relay. Then after that, we have to go for the time calculation uh, for the second relay that is called backup relay. So once you calculated the time of operation for this uh, relay, uh, the, uh, this relay operating time as well as circuit breaker operating time plus some overshoot will be the time minimum time of operation for this uh, relay at uh, A. And uh, uh, after you uh, calculate this one, so this relay operating time <coughs> for the same fault current you put here, then you will be calculating the TSM, uh, TSM of uh, this one. And finally, you have to prepare a report like this that what should be the uh, time of operation. Then next target is to check the selectivity. Either uh, this uh, characteristic you have prepared that is going to uh, operate for all the conditions or not. So for that reason, you have to take the Minimum fault current. So the minimum fault current here, we have taken 3000 ampere current. We have chosen to test the whole setting. Now we have to test it. So the minimum and maximum fault current is 2000 to 3000. So now we have to test it for 2000 ampere. So for 2000 ampere, first we have checked the minimum time of operation. So 0.14 into TSM, which was uh, 0.1 or 20 to the power 0.02 minus 1 that is a 0.226 however the circuit breaker <laughs> operating time is equal to 0.5 second so <clears throat> now you see this is 0.79 so 0.8 second is the operating time of the rb however the rb we are having actual operating time of rb uh, we are having uh, getting at the b uh, at b is nothing but equal to uh, we have to calculate from this one, which is 0 0.94 second. Are you getting? So the value of RB uh, is greater than the minimum operating time of today required for the maintaining the selectivity. It means what? When we have designed it, when we were having the uh, overcurrent relay, we saw that we are having a system like this. Then we are having RA, which is nothing but present here, and RB is nothing but present here. हमने क्या किया था हमने सेटिंग इस तरीके से दिया था पहले इसको ऑपरेट करना था और उसके बाद इसको आरए को ऑपरेट करना था जबकि हमने 2000 एंपियर के लिए भी बनाया मतलब सेटिंग बनाया तो बेसिकली अभी आरबी का ऑपरेटिंग टाइम होना चाहिए मिनिमम दैट इज 0.1 सेकंड में इसको ऑपरेट करना चाहिए तो मिनिमम ऑपरेट टाइम फॉर आरए इज 0.8 बट ये अभी क्या हो रहा है सेम फॉल्ट करंट के लिए कुछ देर डिले में ऑपरेट कर रहा है ठीक है मतलब ये आराम से बैकअप दे पाएगा हम लोग चाहते हैं तो इसको और थोड़ा कम कर सकते हैं बट वी शुड प्रोवाइड दैट अगर ये ऑपरेट किया ये ऑपरेट नहीं किया तो तो ये उसके बाद ऑपरेट करना चाहिए तो इसके हिसाब से हम लोग हमेशा सेटिंग लेते हैं सो इट इज वेरी फेयर दैट आवर सिलेक्टिविटी सिलेक्टिविटी मीन्स वर्ट इफ द फॉल्ट इज हियर देन दिस रिले शुड ऑपरेट अगर ये ऑपरेट नहीं करता है तो उसके पीछे वाला रिले जो है वो ऑपरेट कर, कर लेगा तो इस तरीके से हम लोग यहाँ पे करते हैं सिमिलरली यू मे हैव ए रेडियल सिस्टम लाइक दिस This ke liye hum ka ye available so according to that you may go for the setting of this relay or, uh, at different buses <clears throat> okay so uh, if you are having any question you may ask
तो ये रिले सेटिंग ओवर करेंट रिले के सेटिंग के ऊपर डेफिनेटली वन क्वेश्चन विल बी कमिंग द प्रोबेबल बुक्स ऑलरेडी आई हैव सेड विथ यू एंड यू मे गो फॉर द एग्जांपल्स एज वेल एज दिस एग्जांपल वी आर हैविंग इन द स्लाइड यू मे सॉल्व दिस वन प्रैक्टिस दिस वन सो दैट यू विल बी गेटिंग आइडिया हाउ टू सेट द ओवर करेंट रिले okay good then uh, so you prepare uh, uh, for this question and the second half i will take another class regarding that circuit breaker so we'll be having two parts one is over current relay second one is a circuit breaker which will be the portion for our uh, uh, mid semester <coughs>